We're celebrating International Women's Month on Discover Statesville by showcasing an amazing woman who's putting Statesville on the map internationally. Tune in now. Welcome to Discover Statesville, the show that takes you on a captivating journey through the heart of one of North Carolina's most charming towns. Welcome back to Discover Statesville. Today we are joined by Vienna Barger, co-founder and COO of Southern Distilling Company located right here in Statesville, North Carolina. Welcome, Vienna. Thank you. Happy to be here. I'm glad you're here. Um, So we're going to talk a lot about Southern Distilling, but I guess before we get into that, tell us a little bit about your history and involvement in the spirits industry. Uh, Spirits industry actually was new, so this was step two. I was a public health social worker and ran one of North Carolina's Medicaid programs for pregnant women for about 15 years. And my husband, Pete, and I were looking for a business opportunity, wanting to start a family business of our own, and spent five, 10 years really looking at different opportunities. I tell folks we were nearly a a dock and dredge marine construction company instead of becoming a bourbon distillery here in Statesville. We're glad you changed your mind. (laughs) But uh, about a dozen years ago, we were um, briefly talking about doing a winery on a family farm we have here in North Iredell and uh, discovered the concept of making spirits rather than making wine from grains, from fruits, and started really investigating the craft spirits space and the craft spirits industry and discovered that it really looked like a dozen years ago it was going to hit a similar trajectory as craft beer did you know 20 25 years ago when sierra nevada and anchor steam and all those folks out in uh, california started disrupting large beer brands with craft beer so that's really where things started Uh, we started doing some initial due diligence and discovered that north carolina's laws were really limiting and not friendly towards distilleries. So the first step actually before we even wrote our business plan was working on lobbying in in Raleigh for the spirits industry. Uh, It was a long journey, took us five years to get the first law changed that we needed changed. Um, and then we were really off and rolling with the business plan for the distillery and, and getting the business established 10 years ago now, and then opening to the public seven years ago. How many, let's talk about that. Uh, advocating and and legislation because I think that was a game changer for for everyone in the state and especially here in Statesville with you guys. But um, how many laws have you had? Ch- was that first law the one to be open on Sunday or was it? No, that yeah. actually was the most recent one. Okay. Um, the first one was allowing distilleries to be able to sell one bottle of what they make at the distillery per person per year. Okay. Rather than having to go through state regulated. Rather than having okay. to only buy through the ABC stores. Mm-hmm. So one bottle per person per year, we had to track first name, last name, date of birth, driver's license, and oh, have wow. our records available for audit to make sure we didn't sell you a second bottle in a rolling 12 month period. <laughs> now, is that still, is that so, law still in place or is, has that been modified it is since not. then? That was our foot in the door. Okay. So um, you may remember there was a, a Law, actually, people think it was just the brunch bill and that that just let us start to have Bloody Marys and mimosas at 10 a.m. on Sunday rather than waiting until noon in bars and restaurants. But that brunch bill was broader than that. And one of the things that was in there was expanding those sales at distilleries so that we could sell larger quantities. Um, Since then, we've also gotten it so we can sell on Sundays. Can't buy an ABC stores yet on Sundays, but you can go to visit a local distillery in North Carolina and and buy the spirits that they make there. So big changes. That's a game changer because you can... People are appreciative of that because you guys are busy on Sundays. I've been in there on a Sunday, and um, people, yeah. and, people like that you're there. And right before COVID, we got the laws changed to be able to do beer, wine, and mixed drinks at distilleries, like our wineries and breweries in the state were already able to do. So we got parity with all of those folks that are running those other craft beverage businesses to be able to do that. And then, like lots of folks, had to close down all the hospitality services for a while, but we are now up back running and serving lots of craft cocktails made with Southern Distilling yeah. Company spirits. That's that's amazing. So so you guys, um, all of your operations are right here in Statesville, right, at the, at the facility? I mean, tell us a little bit about the facility and the size of it. I mean, I know your production has increased tremendously. Tell us a little bit it about does. that. Yeah. We have a 20-acre campus where our, our distillery, our event center, our mini donkey pasture, Um, And our barrel warehousing is currently located. We are in the uh, process as well of doing an expansion. So we have another piece of property where we're intending to build some other warehouses and planning to put another plant in. Um, Working through all the uh, potential um, needs that we have relative to city and county support in order to be able to operate at really four times the scale that we currently do. So it's a big change requires some infrastructure development for us to be able to do that um, and stay right here in Statesville to do so. 
So how many barrels do you guys produce currently, annually? Currently, annually, we're just over 20,000 barrels. Okay. Um, when we first started, we were running a single shift five days a week, and we now have 24-7 production. So we are making bourbon or rye whiskey every day, all the time. And with the expansion... It would be you another 60,000 barrels, so wow. it would take us to over 80,000 barrels annually. So how does that, you know, as a craft distillery, how does that number, 80,000 barrels annually, how does that compare to some of, you know, as a, as a novice in this world? I mean, how does that number compare to some of the larger distilleries in, in the southeast region? Yeah, relative to craft spirits, we are one of the largest. So most of the craft distilleries operate a pot still, and they operate at a far smaller scale. Uh, we refer to ourselves as a mid-tier producer, so that, that we're not at that small craft scale. By being mid-tier, that also gives us the opportunity to be able to provide bulk spirits, provide barrels to lots of other um, partners. So we operate with 130 different clients currently around the world that buy our bourbon, rye whiskey, and barrels and use it for their brands. Um, okay. I think that's cool. You'd never know that sure. that's happening, but yeah. 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 And so even with the expansion, you'll still remain in that mid-tier category? Yes. Okay. We will be on the, t the top end of that, sure. but yes. And rivaling really the, the folks that are similar size to us that are in the Kentucky market in wow. the craft space. That's amazing. Yeah. In the For last now, in, there's in, lots of in property available on that road there on. Sure. <laughs> plenty, of, plenty of further expansion <laughs> opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. I want it. So I mentioned when we kicked off the show today that, you know, um, Southern Distilling is, is literally putting states on the map internationally. So, you know, like on your bottles, it clearly says boldly, thank you, um, that you guys are, are, are right here in Statesville, North Carolina. And um, I mean, are you in every every state now? You're, you're pretty close, right? If through not, through e-commerce, um, some states limit delivery to homes. So, okay. but yes, and then distribution really on the, on the streets in retail in about 15 states that we're currently active. Um, probably adding another five to 10 next year. Mm -hmm. So it takes a lot of resources to do sales and marketing and to launch new markets. So we're trying to be wise about how we do that and make sure that we're going um, deeper in the places where we are so that we're not just on one shelf in one place in right. one state, but right. we can really you know, get greater saturation and exposure that way. Well, I see people on social media all the time in the states all over posting either their cocktail or um, that they're carrying your inventory in their store. And, and I, I think it's, I mean, as someone who runs tourism for Statesville, it's, it, it's exciting. It's very amazing to see so many people proud to be showcasing your bourbon in their drinks. Well, we're in such a phenomenal location. I have to tell you, the first year we were open, 2017, we, we asked everybody that came through the door where they came from. Mm -hmm. We had visitors from every single state and 10 foreign countries come see us that first year with with very little advertising, just word of mouth and people driving by and seeing it. I think we just need to move the CVB office into Southern Distillery. <laughs> have the visitor center right there. We can find you a spot. Yeah, I can, uh, maybe just be a bartender too. That would, that would be amazing. Well, and to that point, I guess I guess another thing we want to make sure to mention, you know, is as you are, you know, as Cindy said, putting Statesville on the map and, and really increasing awareness about Southern Distilling and this community. You've got some big time partnerships. Um, with some big time sports teams here and there, you guys have a partnership with the Carolina Panthers we do. and with Charlotte Football Club. We do. So talk a little bit about that and how that came to yeah. fruition. Yeah, well, we actually started with Charlotte Football Club during their inaugural season. Mm -hmm. So as a, really a, a startup and a new company ourselves, we felt there were a lot of synergies with a brand new Major League Soccer team in Charlotte. It also is a, a fantastic uh, fan base. So much energy, such diversity. Um, and really giving us an opportunity to, to share what has been really an untold story of spirits in North Carolina with a really significant population. Mm -hmm. um, we also get great coverage, and Apple TV picked up MLS, so we get to be seen on there, too, with our Southern Star banners in the stadium. Um, and then ultimately, Very prominent banners, too. You guys have done a great job. <laughs> and then ultimately that you know led into us working with Carolina Panthers as well. That's so. super cool. It is a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun and great opportunity for us to really uh, start telling the world that mm -hmm. North Carolina makes great bourbon and has for quite some time. So. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so in that partnerships, those partnerships are just continuing to grow, which we're very excited. That's right. They um, are. They are. And we've got a, a secret special new bottle release coming with Double Shot. So keep your eye out for... Anything a with double shot. Is, a surprise is, on the shelf with double shot. Okay. And us Panthers fans are confident that in you know just a handful of years we're going to be a, a major player again. So it's it's coming. More exposure all the time. 
Well, you know, Richard, their bottle sales have almost doubled because of my consumption. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. But uh, we we do, we we are Southern Distilling supporters. We you guys make some pretty amazing bourbon. So, outside of on the retail side and, and shipping and internationally, um, you talked about the donkeys and the great things on, on the things that you have here. You you guys are open. You talked about the number of people that came in pre COVID. Um, you guys are open seven days a week for tours? We are. We yeah. are. Yep, we're open seven days a week, um, Monday through Thursday. Let's see if I remember my, my hours, <laughs> 10 to 6. Friday, Saturday, 10 to 8, and then noon to 5 on Sunday. Wonderful. Um, and then there's a, there's a full bar there and um, where you can have cocktails, like you said. And tell us a little bit about that beautiful vent center that you guys have out there that's um, something newer right it is it is so we had um, plans for building a nice barn on the on the grounds on our campus with the goal of keeping the tractor because we move grain around a lot Mm -hmm. with tractors um, and empty barrels empty pallets those kind of things uh, undercover and then right as the you know before the pandemic began as I mentioned we got the laws changed to really be able to do beverage services and that meant we could really do substantial events as well uh, we've taken some lessons from some of the great wineries in the state that have nice event business as well and decided we were gonna go that direction um, made that barn really nice and upscale it is it's beautifully beautiful. It is beautifully beautiful decorated we've got a nice fireplace in there as well for the the winter season. And we've started doing single barrel selection events with bourbon clubs, um, groups that have been coming in there, corporate groups, uh, as well as some events and workshops and looking forward to doing many more. I would, um, so thanks to you, we were actually, it's been, it's been three years ago now, but we, you and your team, um, when I first came on board to kind of relaunch tourism in Statesville, North Carolina, you guys leaned way in and you guys were way in and within two weeks helped us pull off a bourbon balloons and battles um kind of familiarization tour uh with some travel influencers in the state of north carolina and um, i don't know if i've ever specifically said thank you to you but if it if it wasn't for southern distilling really leaning into tourism i don't think we'd be halfway where we are today so thank you yeah thank you 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 for that our pleasure to be a part of it yeah and and neat to link in with the history of the battles and really be able to tell that that history of spirits and really Really, the initial spirits production being what built Statesville initially. Right. I mean, I, I just I think it's amazing how it's how it's come full circle. With with today, um, well, this month being uh, International Women's Month, I'd, I'd like to talk about a little bit about um, your role as a, a woman in the spirits industry. And um, I didn't realize how big the uh, women in the spirits industry was. Until I, I watched you a little bit with the the Bourbon Women's Society, and mm-hmm. I mean, there's a lot of great things going on. Can you can you because you're very involved in a lot of that. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And, I can, sure. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's an exciting time. I will have to say, I was surrounded by beards and flannel <laughs> shirts and a lot of. Oh, that. No. And you still are. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so there were there were. Fewer numbers of us, you know, 10, 12 years ago, but it has been very exciting to see all of the diversity coming into the spirits industry. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have a Women of the Vine and Spirits organization nationally that partners both, you know, winemakers and spirits producers together in that space, provides lots of support, continuing education and networking, Um, Bourbon Women as well as another group that has branches, chapters across the country. But it's, um, it, it really is beneficial to all to have different voices coming in and talking about things. And it also gives everyone equal access to be able to say, you know, that that isn't something that's just for those people or just for these people, but that we can be equally part of the space and be able to contribute some different things that you may not have seen had all these ladies not been getting together and having some new influence, some different voices. Well, I think you're the perfect person to be with us to to celebrate, especially with with Southern Distilling being such an amazing destination business here in Statesville to celebrate um, International Women's Month. So thank thank you for coming and spending your time with us. So are you are you guys seeing more craft distilleries popping up across the state? We have seen a lot since we got started. So when we were founding our company, there were fewer than 10 active distilleries in North Carolina. Um, most of those folks are still in business today, but we have over 100 distilleries in North wow. Carolina now. 
Many are small scale, a lot are more neighborhood. And now that we have the opportunity to have beverages at distilleries, a lot of them form more focused on that beverage service mm-hmm. rather than on the, the production and, and yeah. selling bottles outside okay. of the distillery. Yeah. For um, those um, listeners that are more local, um, we very much like to always talk about, we, um, Richard and I always talk about that states will so amazing be, because of the humans that that live work and play here and make kind of make up the patchwork uh, the fabric of of who we are as a community and I I very much um, include you and Pete in that um, now Pete your um, co-founder and husband born and raised here right grew grew up here yeah. um, uh, lots of family here and I've watched you guys be very connected to the community and um, support events and um, sponsor a lot of the big things that are happening to, to help them flourish. So can you tell us a little bit about what community means to you guys and, um, you know, is for you guys to be involved in some of these things, what that means to you? Sure. Yeah. Uh, it's one of our core values, actually, of our company to be rooted in community. And I think in a lot of ways, in this community of Statesville, being so agriculturally based and so family oriented to begin with, comes very naturally to a company that's an agricultural business um, that does, you know, value add to uh, the farmers in our area. Uh, we use over 60,000 pounds of grain a day. So working with our local farmers is critically important to us. We wouldn't be able to make bourbon and rye whiskey without them. Right. And being a part of the community is very, very important. We have a great team. We have over 50 employees now at Southern Distilling Company and encourage all of them as well to be involved in community events and Mm -hmm. provide some support to the ones that we've done here locally. Uh, We also, uh, in looking for charitable partnerships, really landed on Purple Heart Homes here, headquartered in Statesville, active across the country as well, um, as a, a partner that really aligned with that sense of taking care of folks and you know, doing things that are really at that community level and having that, that human interaction around a mission that's important to us. Yeah. Is it your rye? You give a percentage of one of, of your bottle sales back. <clears throat> yeah. The Arms. double rye product. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's, we it's, actually um, was during the pandemic. So we had to get together six feet apart and in masks and all that kind of crazy <laughs> stuff. But we had uh, a great event with Purple Art Homes coordinating for us to bring in a group of veterans to develop the tasting notes and the profile for Double Rye. So they've oh, been a part cool. of it from the very beginning. Yeah, I didn't know that part of the story. That's that's very cool. Um, well, it, I mean, for you guys to be so rooted in community, I think, is is exciting. And um, the fact that you do offer cocktails there and that you get to be open seven days a week. You guys, you guys also, for someone who might be listening that's more local, have lots of events that people may not realize you're having, right? You you have food truck events and live music events and a, a full calendar that people should be going out to your website and making sure they know about. Yes, <laughs> yes for sure. Particularly now as the weather's getting a little warmer um, and it's comfortable to be outside and have music and food truck activities. Um, absolutely. We do do that. Uh, we also offer tours every day. So folks can come in, do a tour and a tasting and see how bourbon is made and have the experience right there in the distillery as well, um, even when we don't have a special event right, going right. on. Best to so. book those in advance on the tours. They, they, you can walk in, but yes, it's nice if we know you're coming ahead okay. of time so we can plan. Well, and you mentioned, I, I do want to touch on this, you, you know, we talked about community and you mentioned, um, and this was surprising to me, you employing 50 people. So, I mean, when we talk about your importance of the community from a tourism perspective, from a putting our name on the map perspective, you know, a, a growing significance as an employer here locally, which is a big deal for yes. a community our size, I think. So yes. yeah, congratulations on your, on your growing opportunities for Thank you. locals. That's Thank outstanding. You. Yeah. Yeah. And, and hoping if we get our new plant up and going, then we'll be adding more folks with that one as well. So. We're going to advance your palate from yucky beer to bourbon, <laughs> Richard Griggs. <laughs> I'm drinking water. <laughs> sure, that's water in, in your cup. Um, so so what do you see, Vanna, that's next for, for Southern Distilling? I mean, is there anything that you want to make sure that we haven't talked about, that you want to make sure that our listeners hear about um, Southern Distilling, you know, internationally in the community? or? Um, I think... Probably the most exciting thing for for me and for our Southern Star brand is that, you know, we we built the distillery, we started making bourbon, we put it in the barrels, and we waited, and we waited, and we waited. 
Um, and now five, six years later, we have phenomenal award-winning bourbons, rye whiskey, our Paragon Weeded Bourbon got best bourbon overall in the New York World Wine and Spirits Competition in 2022. So we're, we're thrilled to be ranking up there with the best in that bourbon category. And really at this point, proud and poised and excited to be taking that out from here and sharing that. Yeah. So growing our Southern Star brand is, um, it's, it's time, it's exciting, and we're really looking forward to having more folks get to experience it, learn about the community we're in, uh, and have a, a great bourbon that builds on the history of what happened here back before Prohibition. That's amazing. And speaking of agriculture and awards, you guys were just honored with a pretty big one, right? An ex exporter of the year. Am I saying that right? Yes, yes. North Carolina exporter of the year from the U.S. Uh, from North wow. Carolina's Department of Agriculture. Yeah, that's something yeah. to be very proud of. <laughs> we are very proud of it. Came as a complete surprise, I must say. Um, I know North Carolina is very proud of all of the things they export, particularly sweet potatoes. <laughs> Um, but we have been very active in doing uh, trade missions and looking at export opportunities. Pete went over to ProWine in Dusseldorf, Germany, and represented the state and our agriculture there, uh, featuring our whiskeys, uh, along with a, uh, another North Carolina distillery. And we're, we're proud to be out there telling the world about all the good things that come from North Carolina. Well, congratulations. Yeah. We were, um, I saw everyone shooting, uh, shouting that from the uh, rooftops. Statesville was very proud. Um, of you becoming export of the it year was very, because it, <clears throat> yeah, us too. It, yeah, very it helps. Congratulations, <laughs> very, very well deserved. Um, so, for people who want to learn more about Southern Distilling, it's southerndistilling.com, right? Mm -hmm. You have a very robust website. Yep. Um, and share your address. Uh, with our listeners for someone's local looking to come by. Yeah, we are on <clears throat> Jennings Road. It's 211 Jennings Road off of Exit 54, right near the Statesville Auto Auction. Yeah, if you haven't been on a tour, uh, we we highly recommend it. We we bring our groups that are coming into town on tours all the time, and it's, it's always a, a highlight of their visit. Everyone loves Southern Distilling. Um, and don't know the exact date, but we are looking at getting Pete back on the show, I think think in June. Good. He's going on a cross the nation car ride. Yes, the Great Race Across America. The Great Race Across America. Yep, which so we'll we... be we'll be launching. We'll have a great party here to get him sent off, but okay. then they'll be driving from Owensboro, Owensboro, Kentucky up to Maine okay. this summer. Is and is that in June? Yes. Okay. Well, Pete, if you're listening, we're expecting you to be back here in June to to talk us talk to us all about the Great Race and um uh, we we enjoyed kind of following along last year and look forward to you guys doing it again this year. Again, putting Statesville on the map. So, Vienna, we appreciate you guys so much. We appreciate your investment in Statesville, um, and we're, we're proud to call you our neighbor. So, thank, thank you. you. Proud to be here. Much. Southern Distilling, everyone. Thank you. Thank you for joining Discover Statesville. You can email us at discover at statesvillenc.com. Check us out on Facebook at Discover Statesville NC, hashtag Discover Statesville, and our website, statesvillenc.com. Catch us next week as we continue on our journey to uncover the hidden gems, culinary adventures, entertainment, and to be inspired and enlightened as we Discover Statesville.